Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we are in the gym and we are looking at the Squat Max MD. The Squat Max MD is a belt squat apparatus. Uh, it's not necessarily, I don't know, like I have a hard time calling it a machine because it is fairly simple in nature. But basically what it does is it allows you to do a loaded squat movement without actually loading your shoulders. Traditionally speaking, when you were to do a squat, you would have to get under a bar, pick it up so your whole spine is under compression, walk the weight out and do your squats. With the Squat Max MD, what you can do is you can do those same weighted movements so you're still getting the effect on your lower legs, but instead of having to load your back, you just basically have to load your hips. Now there might be a couple reasons why this might be something important to you. Existing injuries, surgeries, something that doesn't allow you to use your arms maybe. So for me, I had a shoulder surgery, so a Squat Max would have been an amazing tool to have to continue to train while I was stuck in a sling and unable to really do barbell squats. It could also just be that you want to add some volume for squats and you don't want to add the load on your spine. Maybe you're squatting twice a week and you want to do it three times a week. Uh, this might be a good tool for you because what you can do is still get the squat effect without actually loading your back anymore. So to tell you about the Squat Max, I'm gonna be covering a couple things. First off, what it is, we're gonna talk about how much it costs, uh, shipping, we're gonna then go over the machine itself and I wanna show you all the different features and the actual function of the machine. After that, I'm gonna give you my opinion. I do have a lot of time spent using not just this Squat Max, but several other Squat Maxes. So we'll talk about maybe the different iterations and improvements that Brian Hennessy has made to his design. And then I'll give you my final recommendation on whether or not I think that this is a solid piece of equipment for you, the garage gym owner. So again, this is the Squat Max, and this is everything that you get with the basic package. Everything with the basic package costs $1,524, plus there is a flat rate shipping. At the time of making this video, it was a $149 shipping charge. The whole unit with everything here weighs about 220 pounds and basically consists of a 20 inch tall platform, a riser, a narrow stance inlay, the transformer pin, a seat, obviously the handles to make the machine work, and it comes with a multi-belt. When you get the unit, it comes in two boxes that are packed onto a single pallet. It takes about 10 minutes to put this unit together, and really it's simple to put together. Everything is basically a post with a pin. It has a 45 inch wide by 39 inch wide footprint on the ground, which seems big, but it really isn't. It depends on the size of the space, obviously. In a gym this big, it really doesn't make that big of a difference. Uh, but they do have, and I think that he's redeveloping his rack attachment version, but you can find some of the older versions of that probably on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. Uh, that's only if you can find someone that wants to sell their Squat Max though, because it really is a pretty awesome piece of equipment. So I've already covered some of the parts, but I just wanted to give you guys kind of a quick breakdown on each individual one. I'm gonna start back here with the seat. The seat has nine different adjustment points, ranging from 19 and a half inches at the very top to 11 and a half inches at the very lowest setting. The actual setting on it is very easy to do. Just pull the pin out, adjust it up or down, and then repin the hole. Additionally, there's three different areas that the, the seat can go. It can either go back here in the very back, and it can be used for squats. Uh, you can also turn the seat around, and it still clears the actual pin, so you can do box squats either like close in or far away. Additionally, there's a, another slot on this side of the unit, and so you can do hip thrusts, lunges, uh, a lot of different movements with it over here, and mirrored on this side as well. We also have this transformer pin. Now the transformer pin, what it does is it allows you to transfer the load either 
basically backward, forward, and then up and down to maybe micro tune some fine adjustment points. Again, you can put it on the front or the back, two different holes for each one, and that same style pin retention for safekeeping. Then we come to the narrow stance riser. Now an improvement over the old design with the narrow stance riser is the addition of these triangles. What those triangles allow you to do is it allows you to more easily line it up on the platform versus having to find where the four pins on the back fall in because there are four pins that keep it in place. Uh, with the design before this one, you kind of had to throw it on there and you were guessing on where the hole was or you'd be lifting it up. And by adding these triangles here, it makes it really easy to pop in and out. Then we have the riser itself. Now this is an older model of the Squat Max. The current model comes with a seven inch riser. This one's only five inches. And the reason that I'm bringing it up is because this is just a testament to Brian Hennessy and what he's trying to do with his company. He's very responsive to the feedback from the field. So what, this was one of the things that I brought up in previous questions to Mr. Hennessy. And I was basically asking because with only five inches of space between the top of this platform and the top of this platform, you were very limited on the amount of weight you could load if you wanted to use like a narrow stance riser to do squats. We'll get into the operation of that later, but Brian Hennessy, instead of just ignoring the comments from the field, actually went and made the box taller. Now getting the riser, it's called a flip up riser. Getting the riser off is really simple. There's some retention pins over on the left side. All that you have to do is raise up the right side so that it releases, pull it over and flip it up. After you have it flipped up, you can just pull it right off the unit. And it's these T notches here that help guide everything into place. So when you want to reinstall, just pick it up place the T-notches in, fold it over about 45 degrees-ish, slide it until the notches are back in their hole, and you're reinstalled. Some of the reasons that you might want to take this off is, one, you're not going to use the riser. Again, there's different functions for this piece of equipment, so you just don't use it at all. Or for loading plates. It's very difficult to load like a 45-pound standard plate because it doesn't fit through the hole. Now, if you're using like 25 pound plates, it might not actually be that bad, but obviously with 25 pound plates, you're gonna run out of space inside of a loadable area really quickly. And that brings us to the platform itself. So the platform itself is a nice uh, platform. It's good size. The hole itself is actually not a perfect circle going all the way around. It's actually an oval. So it's 19 inches wide if you were to go side to side and it's 21 inches wide if you were to come at it from the front to the back. Now there actually is a reason for this and it makes plates so much easier to load if you load them from the 21 inch side because then you can actually get your fingers in there. You don't have to worry about pinching your fingers off. Obviously if you try to load on the 17 inch open side, you're gonna run into all sorts of issues uh, to include jamming your fingers uh, the reason that they couldn't make it the opposite direction, so you pick up 21 inches or go 21 inches all the way around, is because the average squat stance uh, of a human being is really starting to get pushed if you have this going out too far. So sitting inside of the oval is the actually weight loading pin itself. The weight loading pin is kind of cool because if you need a loading pin, you can use it as a standalone loading pin. It does generally balance okay and it is basically a hollow pin with band pegs that glides along this rod. As a note, there's also this attachment point and there's a corresponding attachment point down here on the base. The reason it's there is so that you can limit the amount of height that you can pick this thing up to. So basically that would pull tight and not allow it to go higher. The reason that you'd use this is because if you take this loading pin and you're doing squats, and you were to stand up a little bit too tall, you have the potential to pull it off of the guide rod and then getting it back down could prove to be quite troublesome. So the guide rod itself is a three quarter inch wide circular piece of steel that gets bolted down to the lower part of the platform. The base also has these band pegs and there's four total band pegs, uh, two to each side, two heights, and those band pegs are what allow you to put a band on the 
loading pin to give you some band tension. Now, depending on the size of plate that you would use, you can stack quite a, quite a fair amount of weight on here. So I believe the website claims right around 500 pounds, although I do believe with some calibrated plates, you can get significantly higher than that. But you can also add a ton of band tension so that you have two different forms of resistance. So now the way that this works is you would basically clip in using the belt squat. You would unrack the weight. Again, you don't have to pick it up very much. And all that you would do is rotate these handles outward. And there's two arms that basically rotate in and out. At this point, the weight is basically free floating a direct pull up and down, which is the most advantageous to you if improving squats is what you're looking to do. There have been studies that Squat Max very regularly posts about. It compares cable machines such as the Rogue Rhino or the Elite FTS, that giant platform cable style belt squat machine. And it also compares it to lever style. So thinking of like the Soren XJ squat, uh, I have my DIY lever arm belt squat that I made, as well as like a Wenning style design. And it compares glute activation, muscle activation, basically just compares the three different styles, lever, cable, and free floating. And free floating, like the Squat Max, is the one that is most advantageous, has the most muscle activation, and allows uh, zero shear forces on like your knee joints, for instance. So it really is a revolutionary design because it's also one of the only designs of its kind because it allows you to start in the up position. When you finish your set, you would be in the up position, you would rotate the handles back in, and you can put the weight pin back on these rods. So there's not necessarily a right or wrong way to set up the bands. However, you can use uh, this method. So it starts here, goes to this pin over here, and doubles back. And if you do that, you'll want to just leave it spread out so that your two bottom ones are along the bottom, your two top ones are along the top. And then you can pick how much band tension you want by basically putting up one, two, three, or four bands. Now, this is just one side. Obviously, if you do this, you don't want to, uh, if you're gonna use bands, you don't wanna just use one side because you're gonna want an equal pull from the back as well as the front. And if you're just pulling from the back, it's gonna cause the pin to cant backwards. If you pull just from the front or just have a band on the front, it's gonna cause the pin to go frontwards. There might be a time and a place where you wanna get this effect. In my opinion, that is better achieved using the transformer pin rather than using band tension. All right, so the way this works is when you rotate the handle, which I'll do above, it causes this to rotate. And you can see over here, that's the arm moving out of the way. Now to keep that arm in place, because if you didn't have a retention pin, you could just pull this straight because this is attached to the handles up above. This is another example where Brian Hennessy made a giant improvement. So originally he sent this pin, which does have a retention ball in the front, but the holes drilled did not really allow that pin to stay in place effectively. So eventually over time, this pin would slowly work its way out. And I'll put that photo uh, as to where I found these pins when I came in the other day. I messaged Brian about this and he made an improvement and you should get this on every new Squat Max that comes out. But this is the new retention pin and it's a pin with a cotter pin design. And when you insert it, one, the pin is the correct length for the piece. And sometimes it goes in the hole when I want it to. But the cotter pin design does a significantly better job of keeping it in place. Now, the reason that could be a big deal is because if the pin had fallen out, and this has happened to me before on a different machine, is I would be doing my squat, and for some reason, when I would be fatigued, I would pull up a little bit on the handles, and it would actually cause this to come completely out uh, because the pin had fallen out and then you're kind of stuck. Uh, the way this works is you would basically figure out your height that you wanted to use the multi-belt at. You can step into the belt or you can put it on and then clip it around you and get it up on your hip, step up onto the platform, clip in and you can get your feet into position. And when you unrack, slide those out of the way, squat, come up, slide them back in, back down onto the platform. 
This actually brings up probably one of the most important questions with the Squat Max, and that has to do with ceiling height. Now this is a eight foot tall, three inch ceiling, and that is to the bottom of the ceiling joist. With this particular unit, when I stand, I am still clearing this by like a solid six to seven inches or so. If I'm standing on this platform and I clear by about six inches, that means that realistically on this high of a ceiling, a seven inch riser would be no good. Now this is a five inch, and with a five inch riser, and I'm five foot 11, I have like two to three inches above my head that you can actually clear your, your head if you were to set this up directly underneath of a ceiling joist. However, with the joist exposed like this, you could set it up like this one is to where you're right down the middle so that you have plenty of room from the top of your head into the ceiling. Now there might be all sorts of different movements that you might actually use the riser for. Most commonly what I found it useful for is for installing the narrow stance riser and performing heavy belt squat marches using uh, a lot of band tension and basically as many plates as I can get underneath. For most people though, what I see the application between the riser and the narrow stance uh, insert is for training maybe smaller athletes that don't have a 19 inch wide stance during the squat or don't want to have a 19 inch wide stance during the squat. It's also beneficial for when you want to train maybe lunge movements where you want to have your forward foot basically as close to the center line of the weight load as possible. That way you don't have an additional you know, moment arm all the way out here while you're doing your lunges. Now this will vary by your training. This will vary by your coaching as well as your anthropometry. However, I think that the most beneficial use is for marches and for smaller athletes that maybe don't have as wide of a stance. So with all those restrictions on ceiling height and loadability height, as well as the, the seven inch riser versus the five inch riser, really the question is whether or not the squat max is the best option or maybe a cable and pulley system such as the Rogue Rhino or the Rep Fitness rack mounted belt squat is a better option. Really it comes down to basically what you're going to use the most. Now for someone like me, I want to get a better squat and I'm looking for the most muscle activation that I can get out of just the squat. So for me, adding additional volume and being able to not load my spine, it makes a lot of sense to go with a unit like the Squat Max. It's actually a little bit less expensive, even with shipping, than a unit like the Rogue Rhino. Uh, however, it's also more difficult to use. And what I mean by that is it's top loading plates. So top loading plates are always going to be more difficult to use. Uh, as well as if I need to get to a narrow stance, it's going to be throwing on a riser, then throwing on the narrow stance, then I gotta be worried about ceiling height. So if narrow stance squats or lunges or any other loaded movements where you might do a hip loaded movement is something that is good for your training, a cable driven system might be better for you. But if you want the best squat apparatus, the best squat machine that doesn't involve you loading your back, it's my opinion that the Squat Max has demonstrated in studies that it is the best one for that. Now with the Squat Max, you might think, uh, so versatility versus usability versus muscle, muscle activation, effectiveness. So what all can you actually do on the Squat Max? So I cannot even come close to doing justice for the versatility of this piece of equipment, uh, especially when you compare me to someone like Brian Hennessy who owns Squat Max. And if you find the Squat Max MD page on Instagram, that's probably your best source. So if you wanna see the most creative use of a Squat Max MD, jump on Instagram, look up Squat Max's uh, page. I'll link it down below and just start scrolling because you're gonna see Ukrainian deadlifts, you're gonna see lunges, you're gonna see hip thrusts, you're gonna see uh, holding plates out in front of you doing squats. You're gonna see all sorts of different variations that you can do. He's definitely dedicated to this unit and he does a lot to try to educate people on its use. All right, so the very last thing I wanted to talk about was whether or not I recommend this. Now, I think if you've been listening to this video, you could probably tell that I would highly recommend this. It has a decently small footprint. It has 
for my sports on the sport of strongman and powerlifting. I think it has a lot of carryover into training. It has a lot of usability in that sense. It's simple to use. For me, it's versatile enough to use. Again, for me, the narrow stance riser is only used for marches and really outside of that, I don't need it. So I would highly recommend it. Now, if you are someone that does maybe general strength and conditioning and you're not a competitive or strength athlete, maybe look at some of the cable driven systems to see if one, maybe it fits better in your footprint, fits better in your gym, uh, maybe has the versatility that you want. But at the end of the day, I really think it's a toss up and it's the amount of effort that you wanna put into your training, uh, whether or not you wanna set this thing up to, to do all the things that you wanna do. So at the end of the day, would I recommend this? 100% yes. Would I recommend looking at cable driven systems? Also 100% yes. It all comes down to how you train and what you wanna get out of your machine. But that's been it for my review today. I appreciate each and every single one of you that watch these videos every week. And remember when it comes to your garage gym, you should always make it better, awesome, and of course, badass. I'll see you guys next week.